Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the fighting man of the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week till it's over, over there. Okay there, men, it's time for that favorite uncle of yours, Uncle Sam, to shortwave the answers to those swell letters you write in to command performance. The first order of business concerns mail from five soldiers on the New Burma Road, from Private DeMassey, and a certain battery in the canal zone, and from a gang of Indiana boys somewhere in India. Our answer to their letters, and hundreds like them, is they doed it. For here is your master of ceremonies, Red Skelton. <laughs> Thank you very much, Don Wilson. Hi, you fellas. <laughs> well, back home here, we're all excited about the conservation program. It's really great. <laughs> Everybody's saving materials here. Out, we're putting a new room on our house, but we're not even using any pipes under the sink. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun, though. You can wash your hands and feet at the same time. <laughs> And in the living room, instead of using wallpaper, we're using rolls of piano music. You know those uh, piano rolls? <laughs> it's all right, but every time you sneeze, the walls play jingle, jangle, jingle. <laughs> and the clothes, everybody's cooperating there, too. I went in to buy a suit the other day, and they made it out of awning. <laughs> it's all right, but every time the sun goes down, my pants roll up. <laughs> Well, no kidding, fella. We really got a swell show for you tonight. Uh, I think we better get uh, started and answer those letters to Command Performance for you guys in Egypt and Iceland and for a guy, uh, Pittsburgh Baker, who's now handling the door at the Post Exchange in Ireland. <laughs> Here's a gal that hundreds of you have asked back on your big show, Miss Betty Hutton. Come on out here, Betty. And to tell all you guys who've asked me back, I'd like to say this. Of course, I'm not very good at arithmetic, but I've added up your swell letters, and here's my answer. With Alfred Newman and the 20th Century Fox Orchestra, a little thing we call the Fuddy Duddy Watchmaker Man. <laughs> The other night I broke my watch Cause I wound it too tight I broke my watch Round a quarter past nine So I took it round the corner To a friend of mine When I don't know how he does it But he does it I don't know how he does it But he does it I don't know how he does it But he does it The funny daddy watchmaker At the jewelry store Oh, I don't know how he shook it But he shook it I don't know how he shook it, but he shook it Don't know how he shook it, but he shook it He's got it on the beam steadier than ever before I look at the old man go Well, he's 103 and that's no lie I look at the old man go When he raises that glass up to his eye Well, I don't know how he does it, but he does it I don't know how he does it, but he does it Don't know how, but he does it The buddy daddy watchmaker at the jewelry store He fixed my watch, he fixed it quick And mighty soon he was making it tick He made it tick with a beautiful beat It's a quivery box, a tick-tock Well, that V-mail you sent in from Australia has called back uh, another one of your favorite stars. So for an Oklahoma gal at an aerodrome in England, for the uh, Dizazzo at Fort Shafter, and for a gang at a message center in North Ireland, 
Command performance gives you Reggie Gardner and his little playmate for tonight, Don Wilson. Okay, fellas, Reggie Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Don. How well, are you? Well, hello, Reggie. It's awfully good seeing you again. Oh, it's very nice seeing you. I haven't seen you since you're back from your vacation. Why, you seem to have lost a little weight. Yes. Around uh... the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> there and uh, elsewhere. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, Reggie, why didn't you tell me, old fellow? I didn't know what happened to you. Are you just coming from your first aid class or your favorite auto accident? Oh, oh, this old sling. Oh, that's nothing at all. Yes, I, as a matter of fact, it so happens I've just come back from, as you say, my first aid class, where I've been uh, telling about broken arms. You remember, or don't you, that I broke this left arm of mine several years ago? Oh, yes, yes, that's right, I remember. Yeah, well, you see, I used to go back to the hospital every so often for retakes on the original setting. <laughs> and I became quite an anesthetic addict. An anesthetic addict? Yes. <laughs> In fact, it's got to such a point that today an ordinary Mickey doesn't even make me giggle. Well, Reggie, I'm told that hospitals are really comfy places. How about that? Yes, you'd really love it, Don. You really would. It, it helps the tire situation, too. You see, transportation is so simple. No problem at all. They pick you right up at your bed. Two interns in white uniforms, much smarter than the average taxi drivers, <laughs> get you onto that spotless white uh, trolley thing of theirs, and they dolly you off to dreamland. Finally, you come to a snowy white room, flat on your back. It's like uh, floating in a bucket of sour cream. <laughs> You're positively marinated. And there they are. Uh, who's there, the herring? No, 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 old boy. No, your hosts. You see, the head surgeon, the anesthetist, the head nurse... All the people a man really likes to have around him when he goes out. Oh, it sounds very quaint and sort of clubby, Reggie, but I'll take the club. Actually, it's wonderful, Don. You haven't been in the surgery a minute before the head surgeon wanders in casually. He smiles at everyone. <laughs> <laughs> a more savoir-faire than the owners of a seashore hotel. <laughs> and, you know, casual as an executioner, he starts to draw on his rubber gloves. There's a total lack of that nervous tension you find on entering so many formal parties. Everyone's at ease. Everyone knows everything's going to be all right. That is, of course, everyone excepting the head nurse. She generally has a face like the chalk cliffs of Dover. <laughs> she secretly hopes you'll never come out of it. I see. She's kindly but grim. Exactly. You couldn't have phrased it more obscurely. <laughs> You find yourself lying flat on your back, staring up at the ceiling, when suddenly your eyes catch the little red-headed nurse passing around like a cigarette girl offering things to people. <laughs> Awfully cute. <laughs> she looks down at you reassuringly from behind your head, and you look up at her, and, uh, in fact, I'd like to see what she looks like right side up someday. <laughs> from my angle, she seems to have a red beard and a forehead for a chin, all very strange. <laughs> But it's, it's glorious, Don, really it is. If you'd care to try it sometime, I'd be glad to break your arm. Oh, no, no, no thanks, Reggie, no thanks. I, I wouldn't think of troubling you. I'm enjoying your broken arm. Thanks so much. <laughs> well, and finally, they've all washed their hands and strapped you down good, and then the anesthetist puts a cone thing on your face with a smile as if he was handing you an ether old-fashioned or a gas zombie. <laughs> and he keeps saying, breathe deeply. Now, just take it very easy, Mr. Gardner. Don't rush it. Just breathe easy. And he say, no, no, take it very easy, Mr. Gardner. No, slow, Mr. Gardner, if you don't mind. Just deep, slow breaths. Yes, I will. <laughs> You won't do anything until I'm... No, we won't do a thing until you're really out of it. Who took thing away and didn't put it back in? Who took thing away and didn't put it back again? Who took thing away and didn't put it back in? Who took thing away and didn't put it back in? Who took thing away and didn't... Nurse! It's perfectly all right. You're lying, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, Reggie, you couldn't have given us a finer picture of the business of going under in gas, but even if you'd painted with I-beam. 
Oh, well, that's very nice of you, Don. <laughs> it's beautiful, isn't it? As I've said... <clears throat> quiet, boys. <laughs> I've been through it, honestly. I've been through with this uh, anesthetic business so many times, I've really grown to like going out. In fact, I like it so much, I think I'm going out right now. So long, All fellas. Right. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Reggie Gardner. And now command performance dies into the swing department and comes up with the world's greatest band. Command by the AEF, it's the king of swing, Benny Goodman. Hello, fellas, this is Benny Goodman saying hello. <laughs> and thanks to Bob D. and the gang at APO 953. The Three Stooges at APO 826 and Sergeant Zapula in the crowd in Iceland. It took time, but we finally made connections with the command performance. To all of you everywhere, it's our privilege to send you Jersey Bonds. Hard boy, let's go. Benny Goodman. And Benny, if I know my AEF, you're in for another command performance, but soon. Uh, say, gang, according to your letters, hundreds of you have a picture of a certain Hollywood star tacked up on your barracks wall. 
Well, right now that picture comes to life because here in person is lovely Dottie Lemour. Thanks, Red. I'd like to send love to Private G at APO 810 and to the Panama Junglias at Howard Field. Greetings to Suriname and hello, Troyer, at APO 854. And Murphy, thanks for the sweet words written from APO 959. Private D over there in Hawaii, be careful of those tropical sunsets. And you fellas at APO 940, your August 3rd letter gave the San Francisco Foghorns top billing, but I'm answering the second half of your letter. To APO 835 and Friend Mertens, the best of the best. With Alfred Newman's orchestra, Joseph Lilly and the Paramount Male Chorus, here's the number most of you asked for. I remember you. Was it on Tahiti? Were we on the Nile? Long, long ago, say and I I recall that I saw you smile I remember you You're the one who made my dreams come true A few kisses ago the one who said I love you too. I do. Didn't you know? I remember to a distant bed and stars that fell like rain out of the blue. When my life is through And the angels ask me to recall The thrill of them all Then I shall tell them I remember Thanks a lot, Dottie Lemour. Well, that's very nice of you, Red, but what about you? Yeah, what about me? That's what I always say. <laughs> what do you always say? Well, I say those five guys on the New Burma Road and the gang in the Canal Zone and, the, and some grease monkeys in India and Egypt and sailors in half a dozen oceans are waiting to hear from a very bad little boy. Okay, Dottie. Fellas, it's visiting day at the army camp that you left behind. And driving up to the entrance, we find a lady and her little boy. <laughs> this time... Uh, this time, Dorothy Lamour has agreed to be my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be the mean little kid. <laughs> hey, Mommy, how do I look me soldier shoes? Look at this stripe on me arm. You'll have stripes somewhere else if you aren't careful. Yeah. Now, come, come, Mommy. This is no time to start playing 20 Mule Team. <laughs> I is tired. Didn't you sleep very well last night? No, I didn't. All night long, I kept dreaming about Hetty Lamar, Dorothy Lamour, Hay Rita Hayworth, Ann Sheridan, Donald Duck. Well, I don't see how you could dream about all those beautiful glamour girls and Donald Duck, too. Neither do I. <laughs> I got that prude item in, okay, huh? <laughs> oh, Junior... At times, I wish we hadn't kept your incubator so warm. Yeah. 
Hey, watch me play soldier. Watch me go over the top. Get up, Junior. Junior, you stop climbing over the seats of the car. Oh, Junior, you make me tired, always playing soldier. Yeah, I'd make you a lot tired if I were playing sailor. <laughs> You don't know the first thing about the Army. Yes, I do. Well, we'll see. What do you know about Fort Sheridan? Fort Sheridan? Yes, why? Well, I knew she had oomph, but I didn't think you put a fort around her. <laughs> I'm talking about an Army camp. Oh. I'll try again. What does KP mean? Oh, that's easy. Keep them peeling. <laughs> oh, dear. You're always as impossible as your father. Ain't I don't. By the way, where's your father? I said, where is your father? I could answer that, but it would only lead to bloodshed. <laughs> hey, Mommy, Pop was in the last war, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Yeah. He was attached to a French 75. He was attached to a French 75? Yes. What's wrong with that? Nothing. He liked him much younger now, though, don't he, Mom? <laughs> Well, here we are at the army camp. Yeah? Now, try and be good, will you? Are you going to be good? Uh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> well, there's the guard. Yeah, there's the guard. Oh, who goes there? Nobody. We just stop. <laughs> Junior. Junior, behave. Oh, Sentry, my uncle is Major General Gillum. Uh, don't let her kid you. We is Japs. <laughs> Junior, put those fangs back in your mouth. Oh, yes, yes, I, I know you now. The general left a pass for you. Proceed yes. with caution. Okay, okay. Hey, mister, ain't you supposed to have a bayonet on the end of your gun? Why, sure, it's right there. Put it back. Don't, <laughs> Don't you hit me. Put it back. Don't you yell at me. Look at that deep go. <laughs> Junior. Hmm? Junior, dear, yes. why don't you run back and forth across the road in front of the jeeps? <laughs> That's dangerous, ain't it? Yes. <laughs> There's headquarters ahead. Say, hey, what's all them buildings with the bars on it? Now I know why you brought me up here. This ain't no army camp, it's a reform school. You throw me up the river. You double caught me. That's the most dirty trick I Junior! Have. Junior, this is an army camp. Can't you see the hostess? You double caught... They you ain't pretty, ain't they, Ma? <laughs> Look at the big guns, Junior. Yeah, boy, when I see big guns like that, it makes me wonder. Makes you wonder what? Why I waste my time with spitballs. <laughs> Now, here's headquarters, Junior. Okay. Don't lean out of the window too far. I'm going to stop. Okay. <laughs> To stop too quick or hurt me arm. Listen, Gooey, you did that on purpose. Oh, oh you hit me, you hit me. You broke my widow head, you broke my head. I didn't even touch you. You, you didn't? <laughs> But in this place must be haunted because somebody beat me brain down. What's going on out here? Uh, oh, it's you, Dorothy. How are you, my dear? Just fine, Uncle. You remember Junior, don't you? Oh, why, yes, of course. I remember him when he was just a little boy. Yeah, what's cooking, Doc? <laughs> hey, General, have you got your fighting pants on? My fighting pants? Why, I guess so, Junior. This is my uniform. Yeah, awful tight. Boy, I bet you bend over real quick. You get blitzkrieg. <laughs> why do you say things like that? I don't know. Shall we go inside, Dorothy? I want you to meet uh, Major Smith and Burnham, you and the boys. I would stay out here. Oh, no, you won't. You might shoot your hand off and waste ammunition. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you let me stay out here, I would tell. You'll tell what? I would tell everybody that you used to be a dash hound stretcher in a dog kennel. <laughs> Come along, Dorothy. I'm sure Junior will be all right. Yeah. Boy, what a sucker I was. I should have written that where she kissed me goodbye. <laughs> oh, well, here I am, all alone. I will look around for something for me to do. Me little hands are just itching for action. <laughs> Uh-oh, look at that big gun over there. I think I will run over. Hey, boy, get away from that gun. Where do you get that boy stuff? 
I had Major Junior. <coughs> you look like more like Major Disaster. Yeah. You don't look at your quip, do you? <laughs> I had really a major, though. <laughs> Look, I think there's a little trouble up in the front, though. You go up and see what it is, and then report back to me. Say, what's your regiment? What, me what? I say, what's your regiment? Now, let's not get no deep, Bob. <laughs> it's a military secret. Now, you go find out about that trouble or else. Or else what? Or else I will get nasty. And, brother, if I put me mind to it, I can get pretty nasty. <laughs> hey, who is you? Sergeant Pyle. Well, look, before be, you show me around before you check up at the front, will you? Yes, sir. Okay. Mademoiselle from Armentier, Pa, we will. Mademoiselle, the rest hey, has been censored. Uh, this is one. <laughs> this is one of our new tanks. Gee, it looks like a big can of coffee, don't it? Hey, let's open it up and look inside. Mmm, <coughs> vacuum pack. <laughs> hey, look, I see some meanness down there, so I'll tell you what, I, I'll go get some help. Promise me you won't go near that gun? Yeah, I promise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your word's good enough for me. See you later. You don't know me very well, do you, Paul? <laughs> oh, boy, I think I will look at the gun. Look at the little door on the big gun. I think I will open it up. Gee, look at that gun barrel. I wonder if that's big enough to crawl in. <laughs> it looks big enough to crawl in. If I do, I get a whipping. I do it. <laughs> I will crawl up the gun barrel and stick me head out the other end like a gopher. Oh, boy, oh, boy, this is fun. <laughs> boy, it sure is dark in here. I wonder how the little bullets find their way around in here. Uh-oh. What happened to that little hole I crawled into? <laughs> Here's one of the big guns. It's one of our 14-inch guns. Gosh, are you using this gun for practice today? Yes, we are. As a matter of fact, right now. Uh-oh, that don't sound so good to me. Ready to fire! Wait a minute, don't you, don't you? That sounds like Junior. Where are you, Junior? You pull that trigger, you find out. <laughs> good heavens. What are you doing inside of that gun? No, boy, I never do that again, boy. Oh, I had a scared little character I had. Oh, why don't I ship you off to a restricted area? Yeah. Oh, don't do that, Mommy. I will be good. Honest, I will. Don't you mummy me. You're going to get the whipping of your life. Oh, Bend over. No, don't whip me. Don't whip me, Mommy. Pardon me, Major Junior. I checked up on that trouble at the front. Yeah, well, you stick around, brother, because now there's going to be a little trouble in the weir. <laughs> Well, fellas, this is Red Skelton speaking from the USA. And like the Jap said when the Yanks moved into Solomons, we got to run now. But thanks for those letters and thanks for letting us answer them. I guess that's about all for now, except one of these fine days, your big job will be all done. And when that day comes, you'll walk down Main Street and the gals will wave at you and you can wave back to them and say, Well, honey, I do it. Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, answering the letters from you fighting men of Uncle Sam's armed forces throughout the world and from our friends in all the United Nations. The stars and musicians on your big show appear in person through the cooperation of the Hollywood Victory Committee and local 47 American Federation of Musicians. This is Don Wilson saying, send those swell letters to Command Performance USA, care of the station to which you are now listening, and then listen for the answers each week and every week Till it's over, over there.